Hey, what's up guys? Jaden here. Welcome back to another episode where I walk you through how I do marketing for a campaign from scratch. So the first thing that we're doing is SEO and we have completed the optimization for the Google Business Profile. If you have not watched the first episode, please go back and watch the first episode. Yeah, and in this entire series, I'll be trying to explain what I do, why I do it, and kind of show you behind the scenes over the shoulders of what a marketing campaign is typically like. Yeah, so you hope, so I hope you like this video. And in fact, I'm recreating this video again because amazingly, I've recorded an hour plus of content showing this exact video, but my microphone wasn't on. So that it's the game that I played, which is awesome because if I'm, if I'm not recording this immediately, uh, I don't think I will ever record this again. So you can see like some of the stuff I've already completed, right? But I'm redoing it again. And yeah, this is this is just part of the part of the game. It, it just happens. So yeah, I'm gonna explain to you. And I guess this time around I have better clarity because previously in the first hour, I was going through like researching and actually doing the simple steps and explaining along the way. But I guess now I have a better understanding and hopefully I'm able to explain some of the concepts to you guys. So firstly, the importance of site structure. Now for a site that doesn't have site structure, it's going to have a lot of um, problems for two reasons. First one, it's going to be users. They kind of get lost. They, you know, users don't generally look at the URL, but sometimes they do and they want to find out, you know, where they are at on the website, right? So if your site architecture is not, is not clear and it's not simple, then it's going to confuse the users. But that's not so much for users. The main thing why you want to have a good site structure it's for the algorithm, for spiders to be able to come into your website, understand what your website is about. And the better they understand your site, the better they're going to associate with whatever keywords that you have and the better you will rank. And if you rank, you get more traffic and more leads, more sales, uh, more revenue. So that's why a site structure is really important. Now, if you're watching this as a freelancer, if you are providing like SEO services, this is extremely valuable. Because what you can do is planning out a site structure for a website redesign or planning out a site structure for brands and other uh, businesses, right? It's really crucial because most of the time when I take over a project, the first thing that I look at is the site structure because that will ultimately determine how high the ceiling is and whether if there's a cap. So if you're working on a project or if I take on a project that immediately I notice the site structure is very, very poorly done, I know that it's going to be, there's a limit on the SEO performance or any kind of performance on the entire site. I know that for a fact. And so if you know how to set up a site structure, it's going to be really useful because you can offer this service to businesses that you work with, especially for websites they are going through redesign, right? So either they are going through redesign or they are creating a new website from scratch. And, you know, I've seen a lot of website offerings where they offer SEO optimized web design, that's actually, you know, having an SEO plugin installed on a website doesn't mean that it's SEO optimized. This, what I'm about to show you, it's a SEO optimized website. Okay. So the first thing that I want to introduce you to is the tree method. So T-R-E, the big tree. And there's a lot of ways that you can think about it, but basically it's how we name categorization, right? So we're going to have we're going to look at a website and we're going to try our best to categorize into main categories, subcategories, and sub-subcategories, okay? Best practices here is we don't want to go too deep. We don't want to have a sub-sub-sub-sub-category, sub-sub-sub-sub, and you, you get the idea, right? The main idea here is we don't want to have it more than three. The best practice is, if you ask me, is three clicks. You don't, you don't want to have it uh, more than three. So for example, if it's home and then you have home slash services and then you have home slash services slash service one, for example, right? This is three, okay? Sometimes you can have four. You can have uh, four clicks or, you know, a depth of four. That's fine. Depending, again, there's no right or wrong way to do it. This is just how I do it. And there's no like, you need to have this subfolder. You need like, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It ultimately depends on how many business offerings your website has or your brand or business that you're working with has, how many 
different departments your brand or business have, right? So there's no right or wrong way. The best practice is keep it to three, maximum, I would say four. Okay, because what ends up happening if it's too long, you want to avoid the euro looking something like that, right? And then like, you know, XXX, XXX, X, 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 like you don't want the URL to be way too long. Okay, so ultimately keep it to three. And to give you some idea, you can see some of the things I've already done here. Uh, okay, okay, let me just check. Okay, the... Yeah, the mic, the microphone is working. I don't, if I were to record another hour of me, you know, not having audio, I think, yeah, that would be, that would be really fun. So yeah, that's the, that's the main practice. Now, first thing that we need to do is you need to understand the current site structure. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to look at the current site structure. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to see how many categories there are. Right, and look for categories and also subcategories. So there's a lot of ways that um, people call it. They like to call it like hub and spoke, right? Hub is basically like, you know, a hub and then spoke is kind of like, you know, the main subcategories around that hub, right? So essentially it's all, all the same thing, but I like to call it uh, the tree method. So what, what makes up a tree, right? What makes up a tree is the trunk, it's the branch. And okay, let me do it in such a way. And it's the leaves. Okay, now if you if you notice, this is four, sorry, three clicks. Well, if you add in the whole page, then it's four, right? But this is ultimately the, the tree method, okay? So what you're trying to do is you're trying to identify how many trees your website can have. And you're kind of planning out, you know, how many trees you want your website to have, right? So what do I mean? What makes up a tree? A tree only has one trunk, right? Which is the main, you know, the trunk. And then on that trunk, there's many different branches, right? So you have branch, branch, depending on how many tree you have, right? And on that branch, there are many leaves. Okay, so leaves, leaf, 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 leaf. And then you have leaf, 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 like a lot of leaves, right? But that leaves, okay, that one leaf, okay, for accuracy, right, is all on that same branch. So this is how I like to categorize and do subcategories. So it's easier for me to understand how many trees is on the website how many branches are on that trunk and then how many leaves are on a specific branch. So I'm going to show you how I like to, I'm going to show you uh, how, I, how I do. So let's say for example, okay, so what I'm looking at here is for your website is going to maybe slightly different for this is easier, but because the website is not, is not large, it's not a large website, but it's also easier for me to explain to you. So when you look at this, immediately I can see like this is a main, this is a tree, right? A services, right? And this is also, let's say a tree testimonial and then contact us like this. This website is relatively small. Okay, so the main tree will be, you know, home is by itself. And then we have like, so the trunk can be services, right? And then within those services, what do we have, right? We have the different branches, which is, you know, we have, we have all this here. Okay, so I'm basically going through the same thing that I did what I will go but yeah so these are the branches okay and then you do you may not need to utilize every single like if there's no need for a leaf you don't need to have a leaf right but if having an additional category will help Google understands your website more then you can use the leaf but you don't need to have like again like I mentioned you don't need to you don't need to squeeze out a leaf a reason to have a leaf Let's say, for example, Hindu Hindu funeral, and then within Hindu funeral, you want to have like, you know, the cost of Hindu funeral. And then you want to have like a coffin for Hindu funeral, right? So that can be like the different leaves, okay? But all is related to Hindu funeral. And all these are like the costs for Hindu funeral, the coffin for Hindu funeral, cremation, and stuff like that, right? But all belongs to the services branch, services trunk under the branch of Hindu. And then you can do the same for like how is cost and the rest of the, this is cremation. So that's the, or that's the whole idea of how you basically structure up your entire site. Okay, so hopefully that explains like using the tree method to kind of understanding your current site structure. Okay, so after understanding what your current site structure is, I've already done this, which is over here. Okay, which is home services, testimonies and contact us. And then these are the main trees. These are the trunks. And then with it, just this trunk, I have all these services. Okay. So this is how the kind of site structure is like. Now, the next thing that you do, it's you want to do research on potential site structures. So there's mainly two places that I look at. Firstly, is competitors. 
Secondly, it's it's inspirations from other markets. So when you look at competitor, one thing to take note on is you don't just want to look at competitors that you think are doing well, right? Because some of the partners that I work with, they mentioned to me that, you know, take a look at when I ask them for like a competitor that is doing well. And when they, you know, when, when we look at the brands that they recommend, we found that they, were, they weren't actually doing well online. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that the competitor that you're looking at, they are doing well online, right? Because some brands, they have been doing well for like uh, many years, but they are offline, right? And when we want to model after some, someone that is doing well online, we want to make sure that we are modeling after the correct persona or brand or business. In this case, they need to do, be doing well online. So one, one way you can do it, it's by utilizing tools. So I personally, I use Ahrefs, okay? And then I use Ahrefs, but if you do not have a, a tool or software like Ahrefs, you can use something like similar web, okay? And you can just plug in the website or the competitor and they will show you like some basic statistics of your tra the, the traffic and stuff like that. So yeah, just make sure that the competitor that you're analyzing, they are doing well organically, right? Because you don't want to you don't want to plug in a website that's not doing well organically and then model after them because then you're not gonna do well too. So what I like to do is I like to type in the main service. So for example, like in this case, funeral services, right? This is the main keyword. Okay. You can open up some sponsor ads and you can also open up like these this brands here that are ranking organically. So I've already done this procedure, so I already know kind of what to look at. So yeah, we're going to look at this example here. And one thing that you want to make sure it's always plug in the websites that you're looking at, okay, into a tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, it's basically a replication of whatever that I've done earlier. Okay, so just plug in a few websites here. And what you want to know, what you want to notice is the kind of traffic that they are getting. So in this case, for example, like this website is getting way more traffic than this. So I want to look at this example here, right? So open this up, okay? Always make sure that you are selecting and you are analyzing the performance that is most relevant, right? Because you can see they still have traffic from United States. The business that we are reaching, we are doing the optimization for is only based in Singapore. So we only want to look at the performance in Singapore, right? So that drops the traffic by a little bit. And then we can go in and take a look at the keywords. Now, this will show you all the keywords that this website is ranking for. And what you want to do, right, is you don't need to do anything. You just need to take in whatever that, is, whatever that they have on their site right now that is getting the traffic. So in this case, you can see like there is a lot of like the pages that are doing well, kind of like informational-based content, right? How to prepare, how to prepare, understanding, how to prepare and give condolence money. Like, all these are informational-based content. Now, I'm doing this slightly faster because... I've already done all the research earlier. And you want to jot all of this down, right? Have a place where you're jotting things down like, okay, so it seems like informational content gets traffic because the competitors traffic are coming from information-based content, right? And at the same time, you also want to look at their site structure, okay? And you kind of want to see whether if this is some, if this site structure is what you want and if not by order of elimination, you can think of what you do not want looking at other people's site structure. So you can see their site structure is, you know, they have a, our funeral products services and then the actual packages itself. I do not want this because it's too long. Like our, this hour don't have to be in here. Funeral products and services like it's too long. What I would ultimately like to do is I would either like to have either forward slash products, then the product name or forward slash services, then the service name. Right? I do not want to have like our funeral products and services, okay? And then, yeah, it seems like a lot of informational-based content. We definitely want to go after these type of keywords. So one thing is also at the same time, you have to brainstorm and think of what's best for the, the brands in terms of understanding from a user's perspective, right? So when I look at this, you can see like there's a lot of, again, informational-based content, but there's also some, there's also like religion-based type of content I don't know whether if it's this one, this page, or if it's other pages. But earlier on when we did the research, there are some there are some traditions. Like for example, this tradition is mainly for Chinese, right? Only for the like Chinese or Buddhist tradition, religion. Then this content will make sense. Then what I thought about was 
then in this case, should we separate? Like, should we have like the different branches and different categories to have like a race and religion? Like, can we split by religion, race, and generic content? And then we could have like the branch set up. We could have like a tree set up in a way. So the main tree will be resources. And then the branches will be all the different races and religion. And then all the different leaves will be like the name of the article. So for example, let's say, let's say if it's the resources is the main trunk. And then we have like, let's say Chinese, right? And then article, it's, you know, Chinese tradition post, for example. Right. And then all the, all the rest of Chinese related information based article can be parked under, uh, can be parked under, under this URL structure. Uh, and then we don't need to have Chinese double here. We can just have like, like that, for example. Okay. And then this is how the main trunk will look like for the resources. Right. And then obviously like if it's Hindu, then it's Hindu, you know? Yeah. But you get the, you get the idea, right? So yeah. So. Again, okay, you're, you're trying to list down all the different ideas that you can have for the, the website and for the users. So there's also like generic keywords that I'm noticing here. For example, like how to prepare condolences money, right? This could be like generic, like for everybody, right? So for generic ones, you can have also this structure where it's just resources and then just, just the article name, for example. Right. And then those that is anytime when you do, when you are preparing content for your website or business, then anything to do with Chinese, you can just park under this, this branch here. And anything that is generic, you can just basically park under this, this branch here. Or you can even open it up to like general, for example, and then article, and then like article one, article two, article three, right? But you get the idea. Okay. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to analyze what potentially the web structure can be okay so yeah and then again just make sure that you are checking you are checking for brands that are doing well organically so when i look at this you also want to go to the website and look at how their website is structured and in this case this is like like i mentioned you don't want to look at designs that you don't want to replicate so like i i don't like i personally don't like like this navigation it's it's not going to be helpful for the users at all. And then you just want to look at some other examples, but I'm not going to go and look at, I'm not going to dive deeper into like the local markets because I've already done that before. So I'm going to show you another method, which is what you want to do now is you want to look at people that are doing well overseas, like in a bigger market. So I like to look at United States and UK, the US and the UK, and just basically do the same thing. So again, look at, Websites, they are doing really well organically. So you can see all these 600, 100, 100, 100. I'm not going to look at all this. I'm just look, going to look at, uh, this is a government site, so I'm not going to look at this as well. So I'm going to look at the brands that have, they are, they are doing well organically, right? So this brand, this brand, and this brand, right? So these two are the same brands. This one, this one is the same brand. And unfortunately, we are not able to access the website. So I'm just going to look at this example, right? So you can do this not only for United States, but you can do, uh, sorry, you can do this not only for the UK, but US as well. And just repeat the same process, like I mentioned, look at people that are doing well and then just look at their examples. Now, I'm not going to go into this because I've already done this and I didn't find any good examples here. But in the UK, this is one that I noticed, which is gets you thinking about how your site structure can be like. So what you want to do is, Okay, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the URL. So I'm looking at whenever I hover over something, you can see on the bottom left-hand side, there's a URL that comes up, right? And I'm looking at the URL, okay? To see how they are structuring their URL, okay? And this gives me an idea as well. One more way of how you can do it is you can actually get something like Screaming Frog, go in, crawl their entire site, and this will show you all the URLs that the website has. I'm not going to do that because it takes a little bit of time, depending on how big a site is. But... Yeah, that's how essentially you can kind of have a rough idea of how you can plan out your site architecture. So earlier on when I did research about this, I one thing that I really like about this site and they are doing really well because because they are getting, you know, they are getting over 6,000, it's close to 7,000 plus organic traffic and their traffic value is worth a lot, like $13,000, right? Worth of organic traffic. So if you look at the site architecture, right? You can see like on the bottom left-hand side, what to do when someone passes away. And then you can see what to do when someone passes away. They separate their, their trunk. It's what to do when someone passes away, right? And then their leaves is kind of like everything to do with like 
where if they pass away abroad, in a care home, in a hospital, like these are the different leaves, right? Yeah, they belong to the same trunk, but all these are branches, okay? Because their hierarchy, it's they only use like a three, three click hierarchy, okay? But one thing I like about this is they separated out and they differentiated out their, their structure by the customer journey, right? So when a customer experience, this is immediate, immediately after somebody has passed away, what they need to do. And then after that, what they need to do after and then arranging a funeral is kind of like, you know, they also have a before and they also have an after. So you can see arranging a funeral, how to personalize and then, and then all the rest of stuff. So this is how they actually separate it out, which is a really good point, which we can also think of when we are coming out with a site architecture, like having customer journey as part of our trunks. Okay. So yeah, so this gives you an idea of how you can play now. And this is out of the rest. Yeah. So you can see like here, they have their resources as advice. So they have advice, then forward slash, then whatever advice that they have, right? Okay. So again, this gives you an idea of how you can name your site structure, right? So you want to take all this, pick out elements that you like, uh, and then think of how to integrate it uh, within your, your site structure. So what we have done here, okay, what I've done earlier, it's we're going to go with either this or this, okay? So, and again, this is based off on me already analyzing one hour plus of work, which is, which is recorded, but doesn't have audio. So we're going to go with this or this. Okay. So firstly, there's main two pillars that we need to have intentional structuring, which is the services and also the resources, which is all the blog posts. Because from what we have found services, obviously they have like search, search volumes and it's also a place where we want to prioritize. They fall at the bottom of the funnel where people are trying to search for a service already, right? And that's why we want to pay attention to this. And then the secondly, based on our analysis earlier on, we see that a lot of competitors are getting traffic that is informational-based, right? And um, that's why we want to prioritize on the services and uh, informational-based resources. So for services, there's a few ways that we can do, the, do things. We can do it in such a way that we are separating out by different religion, right? So for example, services is kind of the trunk and then we have the branch here. So it can be Hindu, Chinese, Malay, all this here, right? Christian, Taoist, whatever. And then we can have the leaves as the different types of services. So we can either have funeral, right? Some and cascade, cremation, and then other types like embalming, for example, right? But all these are services for Hindu, right? And then obviously, like if it's for Chinese, you just re replicate this for like Chinese, okay? So let's say, for example, Chinese, and then it's the same, right? But this is essentially how our site architecture would be like if we do choose this route, okay? Now, there's another route that we can choose, which is a simpler one, which is services, and then forward slash Hindu funeral, okay? And then we can also have like, Obviously, like this is Chinese funeral. Like you get the idea, right? For different types of religion, race, it will just be services and then the keyword that we're trying to target. And then this can also come in like, for example, embalming. I'm not sure if I'm spelling that correctly, but yeah. Let's say, for example, counseling, grief, counseling, but you, yeah, but you get the idea. Okay, I'm not going to spell it out. But you get the idea, right? So any services that we have, we'll park under this main trunk. Okay, so we have some different uh, examples here. For resources, we kind of have we kind of went the same the same thinking as what we had for services. So we can have the first approach, which is the trunk will be resources. Now earlier on, we see like there's advice, right? Which is also a good term that we can use. So instead of at, at resources, we can also use advice, okay, right? And then we can have like se separated out. So the main trunk will be resources, but the name. We can either change it to advice or resources or like guides, right? But really it depends on, again, the, the beauty of why I don't give you a template is because you may be working on a SaaS company. You may be working on a, like an affiliate site. You may be working on some brands that are totally not, a, not in the funeral niche, right? But this gives you the idea of thinking about how do you name your, your structure because Let's say, for example, if you're working for a SaaS company, right? Then guides will probably be more important because like you, you want to have a guide that is teaching how to use your software, for example. You can have like, let's say this can be guide, but your resource can also be call, you know, 
comparison, right? Comparisons, right? And then you're comparing between your web, your software versus if let's say uh, it was an accounting software, then it's zero. And then it's like, let's say, uh, you know, other accounting software, right? But all these will be kind of like your comparison articles, right? So it's very flexible. It's basically like your playground, right? You're deciding how many trees you want to plant, what goes on that tree, and then what are the specific leaves. And by doing so, you know, when you have really reached this stage, right, you are already like two steps ahead of most SEOs or most web designers because like I mentioned earlier, this is a SEO optimized site. Having a SEO plugin on a website doesn't mean that it's SEO optimized. Having a keyword on the homepage doesn't mean that it's SEO optimized because that is like a very, very fundamental thing to already have, right? This, when you, when you reach this approach, you're already taking like two steps ahead of other people. Later on, yeah, in the next, probably in the next episode, I'll show you how we can use data to actually decide what route should we take and finalize, right, which is over here, okay? So yeah, over resources, we can go via this route. So any, any posts related to the Hindu religion or like the Chinese religion will all be published under here. So for example, this can be, you know, con early on we saw condolences, money, for example. Okay, I'm not sure if it's spelled incorrectly, but yeah, but and then it, this can be like traditions, but you get the idea, right? Anything to do with Hindu will be parked under here. And then Chinese will be parked under the Chinese branch and stuff like that. And then the other route we can go, it's similar to this. We can go resources forward slash post. So for example, this will be way more simpler. So for example, Hindu condolences, money, for example. And then if it's Chinese, then we have Chinese. So the main trunk will be resources. And then all these are just like different branches. Again, like I mentioned, we don't have to keep utilizing leaves, right? If we don't need to, okay? You don't need to have like, you don't need to make it. Like sometimes a tree has no leaves, right? If that makes sense. So yeah, so that is how we kind of have decided. Again, based off on researching, based off our understanding, looking at some competitors, think of what we don't want, think of what we want, right? And then, yeah, so that is kind of how we want to go with. And the rest of the stuff like testimonies and contact us, you know, we don't have an about section. So if you see, yeah, you can see their about section, right? Even their about section on the bottom left-hand side, you can see like how they are structuring this out. So their main trunk is about their brand, right? And then under that brand, they have like history, company, the location, the community, community and stuff like that. So what we want to do, we currently don't have an about section. So we also want to think about having an about section, which is the main trunk. And then we can have like about the company, about the values and things like that. We can also choose not to have any and just have the main trunk as the main trunk because sometimes a tree doesn't have trunks. I mean, sometimes the tree doesn't have branches. Okay. So yeah, if you want to spend more time on where it's more valuable. So the reason why I'm spending more time here is because nobody is going to search for the brand plus testimonial, right? Unless your brand is a huge brand, okay? And nah, even, even if you're a small brand, you still do get some searches if they are looking for your services. But it's not going to be as much compared to this section here or this section here, right? This is where all your main source of traffic will be coming from, okay? And that's why you need to be more intentional here. Okay, obviously, like, again, okay, depends on the brand you're working with. depends on the kind of website and business you're working with. And that's why, like, it's so flexible. So that's about what we have for this episode. The next episode, what we will do is we will decide whether we are going for this structure or this structure for both services and the different resources. And this is based off on doing keyword research, okay? So if you already reached this stage, if you are already doing this, you are already like two steps ahead, like I mentioned. But if you are doing the final step, which is validating which step to take based off on data, based off on the key research data that we are going to see, then that is like the ultimate way of setting up a site for success. And it's very difficult for your site not to rank for any kind of keywords. Because usually when you do a site architecture or whenever I do a site migration or redesign for a site, right, every single time, the website has gone up, has shot up in terms of performance. So what we're going to do is we're going to use keyword research to see whether is there going to be a demand for specific religion or race, right? Let's say, for example, if we do a keyword research and we see like out of, let's say, 100% of the informational keywords that we get, only 5% are separated out 
like only 5% of them have like religion in them or race in them, then we probably want to go with this route, right? Because there's not a lot of, there, there are a lot more generic requests or generic keywords that we can target and we don't need to, you know, make it in such a way that it's very specialized. And then vice versa, if we do find a lot of keywords that is related around race or religion, like there's a lot, then we want to go up, we want to go with this structure. Okay. But that will be in the next episode. So yeah, that's about it. Yeah. So if you've watched until here, you know, if you like the video, if you please help me to press the like button. And also like if you have watched until here, you know, technically I'll be recording this for one hour plus because this is the second time recording. And if you've watched until here, I mean, just subscribe. Right, because you're in, you're into the like you're thirty plus minutes in, right? So just subscribe, so you can get the next episode alert fast whenever it's released. And if you think that somebody can benefit from this, please help me to share with them. And yeah, that's about it. So in the next episode, what we'll do is we'll do keyword research to finalize the URL structure. So that's all. Thank you so much for watching, and just for the second time.